Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this Zoom meeting. I want to thank our special guest today. We have Stephen Hewer with us, and I won't attempt to pronounce the German pronunciation. I'll just stick with the American pronunciation. Um, I just recently learned about Stephen's work, and I'm going to share my screen in just a minute. Um, but as we go through this meeting, I'm going to share some personal experience. I'm going to ask Stephen to share some personal experience. But before we go too much further, Stephen, welcome. Thank you, Donna. It's an honor to be able to be on your show. Thanks for having the platform and trying to reach people and help alleviate suffering through nutritional healing. Yes, yes, definitely. That was well said. I appreciate that. So you're okay if we record this and put it on our channel for of others? Course. Of course. Perfect. Okay. Um, I am going to share my screen. I have a few things here that I think would be very helpful for everyone to see. I'm going to leave it in this mode instead of full screen mode. Okay. Um, Stephen is, has his bachelor's of, of science. Now, what is your BS in? Uh, neutropath. That's what the bachelor of science is in. Neutropath There's a school in Arizona called the American College of Neutropathy. And they okay. focused, focused on Dr. K. Reem's work and, and other nutritional science. Interesting. You know, I never heard of that until I met you. That's very okay. interesting. Yeah. That's I was like one of the first before schools even existed. I took, I was taking my course in the late eighties. Wow. Okay. Let's see. Late eighties. I was in, in nursing school. So yeah, we're probably close to the same age. This is um, Stephen's webpage. You can see here, synergisticnutrition.com. And uh, let me just share his bio with you. I'll just uh, quickly run through this. He's he's a naturopath, founder of Synergistic Nutrition, a private membership association, which I, I really appreciate that concept. Dramatically improve your health in 30 days or less with empirically proven nutritional nutrition synergistically applied. Stephen has a timeless message. The degree of happiness that we all desire is directly connected to the degree of health and energy that we have. Stephen's 34 years of full-time experience in the holistic healing art, arts field and his personal journey. I think that personal journey part is, is the biggest factor. Um, his personal journey back to health and knowledge acquired from helping thousands of clients to better health gives him a wealth of knowledge that will shorten your time getting back to ideal health. That's important these days. Using a synergistic combination of diet, supplements, peptides, technologies, and paying attention to what makes your heart feel love, a sick person can recover their health. We appreciate that. And uh, our focus as a ministry is, is helping people's minds to be more clear so that they can think and connect with our creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even has an expertise in restoring kidney function. That's important. And getting clients off dialysis. Restoring bone density, which is what led me to Calronic, restoring joint and disc health, helping the body go into remission from cancer, restoring a hypo or hyperthyroid back to normal, recovering from adrenal fatigue, helping a leaky, constipated, or compromised gut, who haven't we included here, <laughs> and how to detoxify mercury and other toxins from the body in the shortest time in as short a time as possible and how to uh, recover reproductive health for men. So again, I think that we've, we've pretty much been all inclusive here. So um, Stephen, I pulled a screenshot off of one of your um, papers that you sent when I ordered Calronic from you. And I want to share that. And let's just, let's just kind of tell everybody what this means here. Um, can you explain what this little chart's talking about? Yeah, this is uh, research done decades ago showing the level of uh, trace minerals in the topsoil of various countries and the degree of depletion of those uh, trace elements. So <clears throat> this is um, percent depleted over 100 years. So ever since you know commercial agriculture has been introduced to all continents of the world, when you introduce chemical agriculture, you start to destroy the, the microbiome, and this is, which is the microorganism population of the soil. <clears throat> and they're the guys that actually make the humates. And the humates are what trap moisture and uh, keep calcium levels and the minerals in the top of the soil. And because those aren't there, they start being uh, rained down to the depth below the, the uh, root system of the plants. So basically, you have super depleted soils. 
uh, 74% in Africa, 76% Asia, Australia, 55%, Europe, 72%, North America, 85%, uh, South America, 76%. So that's the degree of depletion as of 1992. Um, and so this is one of the reasons that you, you know, can help. A lot of people don't want to take pills. They don't believe in supplements because they've never been, you know, they grew up without taking pills and mm -hmm. just have this subconscious program that, you know, we should get everything from diet. Well, that's just not the case. If you want to be a smart person that lives free of disease, you want to live to be 100 to 100 plus years of age, free of disease with all your marbles intact, then you're going to need to uh, avail yourself of supplements because they're going to compensate for the fact that your food no longer contains the nutrients it once did. And, you, and that's not just the mineral levels. If those mineral levels are lacking, what's going on is that the plant's ability to synthesize all of its chemistry, all of its life-giving chemistry, all of its antioxidants, all its polyphenols, <clears throat> they're not, they're going to be reduced considerably. So the whole plant kingdom, and then, you know, you go up and so that, you know, if you're eating animal products, you know, that's going to be a little more nutrient dense for sure, but the animals are still grazing on grass on depleted soils. So I, I try and get people onto a trace mineral supplement, which we talked about before we started our interview uh, of colloidal minerals and calronic, because when they do those together, they're addressing pretty much the full spectrum of minerals they need. And they're addressing the fact that the, in the biochemistry of the body, 80% of the mineral needs is calcium and 20% is the other elements. And many, many minerals will not work at all unless they're in the presence of ionic calcium. So when you take calronic, one scoop of that or two scoops, depending on body size, with water, react it for a minute, and you, you add your tablespoon or two of the colloidal minerals, drink that down in the morning, you know, for a lot of people, you'll feel like you're shot out of a can and you feel so good. And <laughs> you have all this energy and you don't need to eat as much and you, your cravings are healthier, you crave healthier foods and and you do that at the end of the day, and you might have to be careful at the end of the day, at the end of the day dosage, you might have to cut out the colloidal minerals because they might give you too much energy and prevent you from sleeping. It just depends on your body type. So, um, you know, that's in a nutshell about depleted soils and, and why we need to supplement minerals to, to overcome that. So if I'm understanding this chart correctly, then if we compare apples to apples, the soils of a hundred years ago had 85% more nutrient. We only have 15% of what they used to have. Yeah. I, and that, that, this was in 1992. So it's depleted even more since then, since that was, you know, right, three right. decades ago. Right. So, you know, I appreciate the gardening methods of a man named Bob Gregory because he, um, he's, he is, you know, organic gardener and, and natural and all this, but he uses natural supplementation for the soil, like what we're talking about for the body, you know, to get the soil back into shape that it needs to be so that the, the plants that are grown on that soil can give our bodies what it needs. Very few people are doing that these days. And so I really appreciate that emphasis. So there's, you mentioned in your paper, the, the BRICS readings and fruits and vegetables, and that goes right along with what we just talked about. Can you just touch on that briefly? The BRICS readings and fruits and vegetables. <clears throat> So Bricks is the last name for a German scientist that figured this out years ago, that basically the sugar content of the juice of a plant. So when you squeeze the juice of a broccoli plant or the spinach leaf or the carrot, there's a the, there's mineral sugar. So the plants are always busy in photosynthesis from the sun interacting with, you know, the chlorophyll uh, in their leaves. They're photosynthesizing, which is the which is the term for the creation of sugars. And those sugars are binding themselves to minerals. So they're called mineral sugars. So if you extract the juice to so crush you know, the, the leaf and get a little bit of juice out, just a few drops, and you put it on a refractometer, the refractometer, the light coming from the sun or the light source will bend the, the light according to the mineral and sugar content in that juice so that on this scale of zero to 33, you'll get a reading. And there's you know, high bricks, which is when you're, when you're fruits and vegetables and your grasses and, and grains and stuff are high bricks, high in mineral sugar content. They confer this superior effect, both animal and human health uh, in, in several ways. One is that <clears throat> the plant itself is more immune to anything. So, uh, you know, any kind of a disease, it's it's like immune to it. You can wrap a sick tomato vine, vine full of um, white flies on a, on a healthy high bricks tomato plant and the white flies and fungus won't transfer from the sick plant to the healthy plant because it's it's a matter of the health of that plant. It doesn't it's not it doesn't have the conditions for them to for the disease to occur. <clears throat> so, because plants aren't grown in such a way that they have high bricks levels, 
you end up transferring that weakness. In other words, they, they, they're so weak in their health because they're so low in their mineral sugar content. Um, like you could do, you could do an actual, you know, buy a, a refractometer and do this with vegetables you buy out of the produce section of the health food store. And you could just squeeze a little bit of the apple juice through a, a garlic press or whatever, and a few drops on your refractometer and, and read it. And you'll see most everything is in a poor range. It's in a very low range of mineral sugar content. So that's the immune system of the plant. <clears throat> <clears throat> so you end up with a problem there where the, the plant can't protect itself. Now it's basically the, the antenna of the insects out there. Nature created it so that only the strongest survive in the plant kingdom. So if the, if the insect detects through its antenna frequencies from the sick plant, then its job is to go eat that sick plant. <clears throat> so the only way those foods get protected is through pesticides. So now you're transferring a sick plant into your body when you eat that and all the weakness that it has because it doesn't have a strong immune system and you can't thrive in your own body because it doesn't have everything it's supposed to have in it. So that's, and then there's another study that was done where these dairy cattle were taken and one, one dairy cow was taken and basically um, they tested how much milk it could produce on low bricks alfalfa with grain and high bricks alfalfa with grain. So the low bricks alfalfa uh, was like, a, a, a the, the reading was about eight. And if they fed it low bricks alfalfa, it needed 30 pounds of grain to produce 100 pounds of milk. But if they fed that cow high bricks alfalfa that was like 16, so it was like a lot of sugar in that, that alfalfa leaf, <clears throat> mineral sugar, um, that the cow could produce uh, 100 pounds of grain on only 10 pounds or 100 pounds of milk and only 10 pounds of grain. So oh. that's a 40% difference. And what that means is that the liver of the animal's body is responding to those mineral sugars to become so much more efficient at protein synthesis that it needs 40% less dietary protein to achieve its ability to produce 100 pounds of milk and to stay healthy. So it's the same with the human body. If we had high bricks foods, we'd all need to eat a lot less animal proteins, 40% less animal proteins. And, um, you know, another, yeah, that, another fact there. I saw that point in, in your paper, you know, the connection between calcium and protein. I thought that was very interesting and kind of springboarding also on what you just shared. Um, for those who don't know, um, if, if you follow our channel, then, then I've talked about it before, but, um, when they spray glyphosate on these plants, on these Roundup Ready crops and stuff, glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup, just in case you don't know. That is a mineral chelator. It pulls minerals out of the soil, out of the plant. And, and when you eat it, it's pulling minerals out of your body too. So it's kind of a vicious cycle that we've gotten ourselves into here of mineral depletion. And I believe that mineral depletion and Stephen, I think you would agree with this as a foundation of so many of the diseases that we're dealing with today. And I, yeah. I, I yeah. Felt, yeah, go ahead. Did you want to share something? Uh, well, <clears throat> glyphosate will bind to the manganese so tightly that it's not available for the plants and manganese is what's required for the plant to produce its seeds. So the soybean or the corn or whatever. And, um, and then it's also something proven to put holes in the digestive tract. So the tight junctions of the intestinal tract that only allow for fully broken down foods to be absorbed in their single amino acid state or their single nutrient state so that there's no allergenicity when it gets into the blood, that, that tight junctions get broken and damaged and opened up upon exposure to glyphosate, it creates a leaky gut, and then you start absorbing your foods in their undigested state. And then when they're a protein food, those proteins go into the blood in a long enough protein stand. And when they're basically longer than 50 amino acids, the protein structure, now it looks like something that's that's foreign, like a, a virus or a bacteria or something foreign. So the immune system has to go after it to attack it. <clears throat> that creates a state of chronic inflammation, which can lead to an autoimmune condition. Yes. And, um, so, and also people have proven that the glyphosate causes lymphoma. So it's now documented to cause cancer. And there's also birth defects. It's a teratogen. The people in India have been sold a bill of goods generations ago to use glyphosate to raise crops cheaper and have more profit. And there's so many farmers that their crops failed. And uh, they had so many, there's had so many children with birth defects from eating glyphosate laden food now uh, that it's a crime against humanity. And uh, so many thousands of farmers in India have, have ended their lives because they lost their pro the profitability of their field and they couldn't pay off their land, land payments or whatever. And so they just 
drank glyphosate to kill themselves. Thousands of them committed suicide that way. Wow, that is so sad. You know, I, I, what you just described there is a path that I've walked uh, because with all of the, the health issues that I've, I, I had tetanus in 2018, August of 2018. And in January of 2019, I got Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And then shortly after that, I got mold toxicity and was diagnosed with autoimmune disease. Somewhere in there, I had five hand surgeries. And so it's wow. really been kind of a, a journey. I ended up going to Dr. John St. Rose in um, Mesa, Arizona, because fight as hard as I could, I, I couldn't completely eradicate the Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And it was really taking me down rapidly. And, uh, and my husband kind of stepped in, he said, we're, we're getting help. And so we had heard about Dr. John St. Rose. And so we went to him and he did, um, what did he call it? UBI, ultraviolet blood irradiation and with ozone. And so he would, he would draw up part of my blood, put it into a bag of saline and then inject ozone into that. And then he would reinfuse that into me. And as it reinfused, it went through this box that exposed my blood to, to ultraviolet uh, light. And that, that killed the Rocky mountain spotted fever, but I still uh, have some ongoing exposure to mold that I am dealing with. And so I, I saw Dr. St. Rose again, um, July of last year, and we did a few more treatments because of the mold. And he mentioned to me a product called Marigen. And I know, uh, Stephen, that you're familiar with that. And I'm going to let you address that here in just a second. But he put me on this marriage. And let me back up. February of last year, so a year ago this month, I had two teeth pulled. And with all this that was going on with me, I had abscess after abscess. I have no teeth, teeth, chewing teeth on this side. And then I lost a tooth here. And it really was affecting my ability to, to properly chew my food. And February, I had the teeth pulled. And then by June, I could still, tick, still stick my tongue, say that fast, <laughs> I could still stick my tongue up in the hole where they had uh, pulled these, these teeth out. So my bone was not healing. Wow. And during this whole thing, I had had a, a dog bite my thumb and the bone took like eight months to heal. It was insane. Wow. It wouldn't heal. And so Dr. John put me on this marriage and, and this is what marriage looks like. It's insanely expensive, but marriage is, and you mentioned this earlier, ionic calcium. And so I took four bottles of this and it did make a big difference for me. Within three weeks, I could no longer put my tongue in the holes where the, the teeth had been pulled. That bone had filled in that fast. Oh, good. Yeah. One bottle of this stuff lasts about 25 days the way he had me taking it. And I just could not financially sustain this product. And that was when um, Dr. John told me about uh, the Calronic. And I, I did purchase some from him. He himself is taking this, his secretary is taking this. And another friend of mine who is a um, nurse practitioner is also taking this. And so I, I started taking it. My husband started taking it and my mother started taking it. And I was sharing with Stephen before we started, this is kind of funny. When my mother started taking it, she's, she'd shoot me if she knew I told you how old she was. She's 80. And she started running and lifting weights. So that's amazing. What's that? That's amazing. It is amazing. And so she's, she's a little spitfire. So anyway, one of the things, and I found this so interesting that Dr. John said that, that this ionic calcium would do, he said, because of my autoimmune disease, you know, my, my immune system is just confused basically to put it simply. And he said that this ionic calcium will help to correct cell signaling so that your immune system responds properly. Okay, that was the initial reason why he put me on this, but I didn't know about the effect that it would have on my bones. I didn't understand that initially. I had never heard of this. And so even though I have a health background, um, this was new to me. 
I was actually kind of opposed to recommending calcium supplements for people because I had seen so many people hurt by this. And so what I would like to ask you now, Stephen, to do is in layman's terms, explain why ionic calcium is different from like the calcium you find in a big bottle on the shelf that has horse pills in it. So what is yeah. the difference? So the, dif the difference is um, that all of the calcium supplements are protein bound before you ingest them. That when they say chelated, that's a calcium bound to an amino acid or to a protein structure. And that's the way it's going to enter into your bloodstream. Or you might be consuming an inorganic uh, rock kind of calcium, uh, calcium carbonate, um, calcium gluconate, uh, calcium lactate. And then these forms, um, they get solubilized by the stomach acid and then they're going through into the gut. And then you have vitamin D uh, receptors. So from vitamin D consumption or production in your body, your intestinal tract produces uh, calcium binding proteins. And these, these proteins bind to the calcium, the inorganic calcium in the intestinal tract and carry it through into the bloodstream as protein bound calcium. So then protein bound calcium is what is hanging out in your bloodstream is the majority of the calcium. And when we're young, our body successfully cleaves off the protein and leaves the calcium free of the protein so that it's individual atoms of calcium missing two electrons. And then that's the form of calcium the body uses to regulate the majority of calcium biochemistry. And that's a lot of things. So it's like I said earlier, it's responsible for working with all these other trace minerals so that they can do what they need to do. Um, it's also responsible for adult stem cell production. So adult stem cells is the currency of repair. Those are the cells that the more of them you have, the faster you repair and the faster you heal from anything. So that's why you heal so much faster when you're younger. Um, they're also responsible for cell division. So the ability for a cell to divide into a new healthy cell, calcium, ionic calcium has to be there. It's also responsible for the form of calcium that makes new bone. So to make new bone, you have to have this. This is why so many attempts people have tried over the years to create a, a supplement that's going to be effective at restoring bone density. And they, they come up with a, some of them have been like the actual bone uh, calcium, hydroxyapatite calcium from an animal's bones, because that's the structure that our, our bone cells are made of. But it's ineffective. It barely works at all. Um, because it's not ionic calcium, because it's not mimicking exactly what the body would do when it's young and healthy. So the body does produce its own ionic calcium efficiently up to the age of 35. After that, production begins to decline. Like a lot of our biochemistry after age 35, it starts to decline and becomes an, an, more aged. <clears throat> and so by the time you're in your 50s, 60s, and 70s, you're so deficient in ionic calcium uh, that you end up with the parathyroid, which the parathyroid, which is in your thyroid gland, monitors your your ionic calcium levels in your blood at all times. And so when it drops too low, parathyroid signal to turn on parathyroid hormone production to compensate, and that dissolves bone. And that dissolving of bone is to try and free up calcium to get that ionic calcium in the body again. And it doesn't work efficiently, so it leads to a progressive, excessive level of this parathyroid hormone and dissolve, dissolving of bone. So this leads to osteoporosis, leads to osteoporosis of the jawbone, gum recession, and eventual tooth loss. Um, all because of a lack of ionic calcium. And um, and uh, the, 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 the form of calcium is important. Like back in the day when I was practicing Dr. Carrie Reams' work, uh, oh, I want to say one more thing. So the other thing that's really important is that intracellular pH, for an, at the inside of the cell pH to be healthy, it's supposed to be 7.35. And then that determines the amount of dissolved oxygen in the, in the, in the plasma of that cell. So you end up with a, a generous dissolved oxygen content so the mitochondria can make energy in the presence of oxygen aerobically. <clears throat> but what happens is that because of this lack of awareness, our bodies produce more acids in a day than alkali. So when you get older, you become progressively more acidic. Intracellular pH drops because of that deficiency of ionic calcium. Now you have the environment where, and, and salt contributes to this. So salt consumption, unfortunately, especially when you're older, <clears throat> that sodium goes into the cell and lowers the pH down to 7 to 6.8. And then that lowers the oxygen concentration to such a low level that it forces the cell to want to make energy without oxygen, which is a tumor cell. Mm. So <clears throat> when you take calronic, you're supporting intracellular ideal pH to help protect the body from tumor cell occurrence. <clears throat> and um, so the, uh, you know, this plays multiple roles in the body and, uh, like I had, I had dental problems. And I, at one time I was a fruitarian uh, for six months in Hawaii in my twenties. 
And I guess it dissolved so many acids, they dissolved the chewing surface of my teeth. Um, I had to do some things to remineralize the teeth and I wore away my enamel and I was sensitive to hot, cold, sweet. It was like always painful. And then I did these things to remineralize it. But I, I have these pockets in my chewing surface of my teeth from etching away to eating acid, acid fruit foods. Um, and the reason I did that was because I was so constipated from mercury poisoning for years. So <clears throat> fruit was easiest on the gut. But whatever. So that taking margin, I noticed the first. So I was on margin for a year and a half. Uh, but I was trying to overcome breast and prostate cancer, which I had both. And I had autoimmune hyperthyroid at the, at the time. And uh, I had no improvement in those areas. But I did have some improvement in my dental health with the, the, those pockets growing in a little bit. Uh, I think, but excuse me, right here on your web page, you have a, a tab that says my story. Yeah. So you can see the whole picture of Stephen's story right here. Yeah. And so then I, um, <clears throat> so then I, I was 15 grand later, a year and a half later, 15, 15 grand later in expenses from origin. And I just go, this is, I can't afford this anymore. So oh. I recalled I had worked with the product early in my practice, but at that time didn't appreciate and understand the role of ionic calcium. So I contacted the guy that invented it and told him if I could start carrying it again. He said, yeah, sure. So we started carrying it again. I started using it and the teeth grew in even more. The pockets filled in even more than they had on, on margin. And mm. my teeth got tighter. It's harder to like put a piece of dental floss in between them. And, you know, I had clients telling me they were feeling really good from it. Uh, sometimes more energy, sometimes more hydration. Uh, sometimes it was their bones. They felt like, like one lady, she had gum recession and, uh, uh, was really acidic and stuff. And she was trying to reverse that. So she did several things with the Calronic and she reversed her gum recession in six months and her bones felt like they were finally nourished again and strong again. And uh, and at one point when I was doing the, the carrier ream stuff, which is inorganic calcium, uh, I developed calcium buildup in my foramen of my neck. So the holes out of which your spinal nerves come out of your vertebra, <clears throat> those holes were getting calcified and narrowing and pinching on my nerves. And it, it was feeling really weird, not comfortable. And <clears throat> so I started to take uh, the margin and uh, it went away. And I, I got off the inorganic calcium and I started taking margin and it went away. And to this day, while I'm on Calronic, I've never had that problem again. Mm. And, uh, okay. and then when I went to dentist, some oral surgeon not too long ago and I had a tooth pulled like you, um, <clears throat> he said I had above average jawbone density. Wow. That's I was like, that's like, yeah, I've never, you know, that's just proof that this is working. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, go ahead. I've been taking this for roughly six months now. And I, I'd wanted to share another uh, part of my, my journey with my teeth. But before I do, I'll show this, you know, if you don't have some of this litmus paper, the pH paper, you might want to get some and I'll let Stephen touch on that in just a minute. Um, it's a very helpful tool to find out where your body pH is, which is very important. But what happened to me was when I, when, when I went, when I had the teeth pulled, my husband and I went up to, I had those pulled here in Alabama, went up to North Dakota, and I was just going to get some kind of partial because I said, you know, I got to be able to chew my food. So we went to um, dentist in North Dakota. He did the cone beam where they go all around your head and, and look at, you know, I guess it's a 3D image. And um, he he didn't really want to say too much, but he did tell me, you're really not a candidate for a partial. So he sent me to a specialist in Bismarck, North Dakota. And, and when I went to the specialist, he looked at the cone beam and he looked at me and he said, your implants would probably fail if you tried to have implants. It, yeah. You don't have enough bone. Okay, that was June. July, I started on the margin. And like I said, in three weeks, I could no longer put my tongue in these holes. The holes had filled, had leveled in, had filled in. Then in October, when we got back down here to Alabama, I went to the bio dentist to, to just have my teeth checked and cleaned and stuff again. And um, I had a, a, a free cone beam coming with them because I had had tooth extractions. So they did the cone beam and he said, if you're going to have implants, you need to do it now because you have barely enough bone. And I thought, <laughs> it's not that I have barely enough. It's that I now have enough bone, you know, because my, my, 
my my bone density is is improving and so you know i am so thankful i actually have two screws in my jaw now and once those heal hopefully i'll be able to get those crowned and uh, wow. are, they, are, they, are they are they titanium or zirconium zirconium okay uh, good so that your body's accepting them that's good yes they they seem to be doing just fine now just just briefly you want to um comment yeah. on this and then we'll move on <clears throat> yeah so <clears throat> a guy named uh royal raymond rife discovered uh micro studying microbes back in the uh, 20s and 30s with his my rife microscope that no pathogen would grow in a neutral pH of seven. And so that kind of became the foundation for um, believing that the body's pH is neutral <clears throat> and slightly alkaline. And so now we know that the, the blood pH, of course, is 7.35. The intracellular pH is supposed to be 7.35. <clears throat> so as your body's making energy from combusting foods into energy, it's producing acids. So whether it's carbohydrates or proteins and fats, they're all breaking down and their, their end byproduct is an acid. And only a little bit of your foods are giving you alkali, which is minerals from fruits and, and vegetables, but they're insufficient to mm, compensate for the degree of acidity the body naturally produces in a day. And it produces in the physiology test books, it says you produce 50 moles more acids in a day than alkali. <clears throat> so it's a physiological fact. That's what happens. And if you look at one example of a population of people that daily alkalinize their body, uh, and they're the longest lived people on the planet. That's the Hunza people. So they, they live in between Pakistan and Turkey. They live on the glacial snowmelt water as their drinking water and their irrig irrigation water. So the glacial snowmelt is uh, the glaciers are grinding the, grinding the rocks of the mountains down into a silt. And then as the bottom of the glacier melts and carries that silt into the river, the river is so full of minerals that it's an opaque white and they call it glacial milk. It's a gray white water. <clears throat> so they drink uh, about one third a cup of rock calcium in their water every day with all the trace minerals. And they live to be 120 to 140 years of age free of all disease. <clears throat> and so uh, very few people have access to that kind of a thing. So you have to make that. And now I say you can make that quality of water or close to it by combining the calronic with the colloidal minerals. <clears throat> so the, the, the pH paper itself is a method of testing your body pH. And the only time you want to test your body to get an accurate test is in the morning. So when you, you go to bed at night, you want to make sure you've, you've flossed your teeth, you've water picked your teeth, you've brushed your teeth, so there's no food particles on your teeth. Otherwise, the, the bacteria in your mouth will feed on the food particles and produce acids and unfavorably uh, influence the pH test in the morning to be too more acidic than it should be. So with a clean mouth, going to bed at night, and then you wake up in the morning before you eat, drink, or brush your teeth between 5 and 7 a.m., you spit on pH paper. And then that's the time you're going to see an accurate reflection of your body pH. Any other time of the day, it's not accurate. Okay, very so, good. Yeah, so you do that and your pH, uh, based on the work of uh, Carl Reich, who was a medical doctor that uh, from the 1950s to the 1970s, his medical practice was nutritionally based. And he observed that when he would help his patients get their saliva pH back to 7.5, that their conditions would go away or improve significantly. <clears throat> so uh, it, it's it's believed the ideal pH of the saliva is 7.5. And you know if you're 7 to 7.5, you're doing pretty good, but 7.5 is the ideal. Um, and then um, your urine pH is supposed to be 6.8 or lower because the body's always excreting acids all the time through the urine. So the urine is always supposed to be acidic and that, that acidity will vary depending upon what you eat. So if you eat a you know significant steak meal and that's more acid forming, you'll see more of an acid forming urine. Um, if you eat more of a drink a bunch of green vegetable juice, you'll see more of an alkaline urine. <clears throat> so that fluctuates all the time, but it's supposed to be acid all the time. And one of the reasons women get bladder infections all the time is because <clears throat> their body is um, compromised. They have uh, internal infections uh, that are producing, and the body's producing ammonia to protect the kidneys from the acid. So because they're not alkaline enough, their body's producing ammonia to compensate so that the kidneys aren't being destroyed by the acids. So the ammonia is an alkaline um, nitrogen compound that is, is like an 8 or 8.5 pH that'll neutralize those acids. So it's an emergency way to neutralize acids that's still unhealthy, uh, and it makes the urine alkaline. And then that's what leads to the uh, environment not being acidic enough that the bacteria can grow in that alkaline pH and create a bladder infection. <clears throat> and uh, so people use things like cranberry juice and 
oh. the extracts from cranberry juice, but that's that's still not addressing the cause. You need to become alkaline by by correcting your body pH, get rid of the uh, infections you may have, so there's not this excess ammonia, and um, you know then it won't come back. Yeah, I really appreciate that the concept of getting to the root cause. That is so important. Um, Stephen, are there any contraindications to taking Calronic? Uh, no. Yeah, it's something your body is already producing. You're just producing less of it when you're older. And uh, so if you can make up for that through taking it as a supplement, it's just nothing but therapeutic. And uh, <clears throat> yeah. The benefit from this. And, and the other thing is that, you know, Dr. Um, I think of his name. He'll come to me. So um, anyways, there's a doctor out there that called, wrote a book called Death by Calcium. Oh, yeah. Dr. Levy. Dr. Levy, yeah. And uh, I respect him. He's a super brilliant guy. And I have not read the book, so I don't know all the details, but yeah. the very title would lead one to believe it's it's damning the use of calcium as supplementation. Yeah. And I want to say that that's true when you over a certain age and the form of calcium you're taking is the inorganic form of calcium. You know, the calcium carbonate in your drinking water that's in your well water or whatever, or your spring waters, all those are going to contribute to the to the calcification of your arteries and your brain and your soft tissues, and they're not good. But it's not the case with calronic where it's giving you ionic calcium because ionic calcium shuts off the parathyroid. You stop dissolving bone. And when you stop dissolving bone, you go back into the youthful chemistry state that enables you to get rid of all the calcium buildup. So, so I think that I'm hearing you say that maybe you prefer distilled water. Am I hearing that? Yep, I do distilled water. I make my own distilled water and that's the only water I've drank for decades. Okay, perfect. All right. Now what I want to do, um, we, we kind of need to wrap up soon here, but I have my calronic here and I have a small, you know, probably half a glass of water. And then I have the colloidal minerals as well that get it right in the camera there. Yeah. Um, I just get the now brand. I think that's what you recommended as that's well. What I, that's what I carry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I want to do, it comes with this cutest little shovel little scoop one eight teaspoon scoop yeah yeah i'm just I, I heap it up okay i heap mine and i'm just going to put that in the water here and you can kind of i don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera but you can kind of see it reacting dripping down in there i'm not yep. sure you can describe yep. what you can see the you can see the opaque white dropping down as a cloud so yeah that's very visual very very that's, uh, obvious that's the ionic calcium reacting with the water and becoming ca2 plus Okay, that's that's our glacial milk that we're making. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it. I put a tablespoon of yep. the minerals in this. Now, I have to say that my husband and I both, when we started uh, putting the colloidal minerals in this, we both noticed an increase in energy. Yep. That was very beneficial. <laughs> We appreciated that. So and it uh, lasts for it lasts for many hours of the day, right? Yes, it, it actually does. Yeah. And you can see how it's kind of turning and it does sort of look milky. Yeah. And it doesn't taste nasty or anything. I'm gonna stir this up just a little bit. And I want to say that some of the ingredients that are just fillers for the calronic, because the calronic, the, the active ingredient is the specially processed calcium oxide, so that when it reacts with water, it becomes the CA2 plus. And that's only 10% of the formula. 90% of the formula is magnesium glycinate, leucine, the amino acid leucine, and the fat-soluble vitamin C called ascorbopalmitate. The leucine and fat-soluble vitamin C do not dissolve in water readily, so they'll, they'll appear to stick to the rim of the glass and stay on the surface. And don't worry about it because they're not super important. They're just a filler, but they're nutritional fillers, so they're not harmful. They're only good for you. <clears throat> but uh, the active ingredient is dissolving perfectly in the water, and you don't need to worry about that. Perfect. I appreciate that because I that I was going to ask you the question of what else is in it. Um, so Stephen carries this on his store and I, I shared that you can rewind the video and go back to where I shared. Um, but once you once you put that in there, I usually wait. I don't know. I sometimes I'll mix it and then I'll go do something else and come back a few minutes later and then I'll drink it. And it yeah. doesn't when I started putting the colloidal minerals in, I couldn't even really tell a difference. I couldn't really notice that the taste was different than just yeah. the cal Now yeah. I have to say that there's more of a taste with the calronic than there was with the marigen. But my understanding is that 
the chironic contains a significant more amount of ionic calcium than the merogen. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's 23.5 milligrams of ionic calcium per one eight teaspoon scoop. The uh, margin product only gives you eight milligrams per one teaspoon serving, and they want you to do three of those a day to try and address any condition and four if it's something severe. So normally the company's recommendation with margin is that you want to be on two bottles a month just to meet the bare minimum requirements of reversing osteoporosis or whatever. That's, that's a thousand bucks a month. <clears throat> and then if you want to deal with cancer, you're at two and a half bottles a month, four teaspoons a day, and which is what I was dealing with. So I, I, I can say that, you know, even though, even though ionic calcium is great, it's wonderful that don't, I've already been through this. And so I have an opinion about it. So because I've dealt with breast and prostate cancer and was on the product for a year and a half and had no improvement for those conditions and my, my hyperthyroid condition didn't improve. <clears throat> I, uh, I deduced that those grammatic case histories they've had with people reversing their count, their cancer well in margin comes from people in third world countries. So you have a lot of their testimonies come from when they introduced this to third world countries where people in those countries are typically born and raised on their indigenous diets. They're breastfed for the, the normal amount of time to develop a good microbiome. So they have a much harder genetic constitution, healthier GI tract, healthier immune system. So they need far less to, to, to change their chemistry and get them back to health when they develop cancer. So oh. in America, you've got people that are born and raised on junk food, not breastfed, have developed weaker constitutions, weaker GI tracts, weaker immune systems, and are bombarded by negative EMFs and toxic everything. So just relying on ionic calcium for an average American with the compromised health that we all have is, is not being responsible to say that this is going to shift your body to get rid of the, your, your cancer. No, you need to approach this in a much more comprehensive manner, just like you did with Dr. Rose, where you know you use this uh, blood removal and 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 drip going through the device. I think that's the advanced light device because I've done the same thing. And uh, it's miraculous to do that because that'll clean your blood and, and kill off stuff in the body and make it so your body overcomes that hump quicker right. than it could on its own. And so that's the same thing with nutrition. You need to, you need to, if you want to be healthy and not have to go see the doctor all your life and, and whatever, you have to do nutrition more conscientiously than you ever thought before. Yes. I, I have to say, um, I think the last time I bought, I bought seven bottles. I normally buy six bottles, two for myself, two for my husband and two for my mother. And I, I've only had to do that once because this bottle is way cheaper than a bottle of marriage. And, and this will last me almost two months. Yeah. And I take it sometimes three times a day, always twice a day. And sometimes three times a day because, uh, you know, all the things that I've had to deal with. So I really appreciate um, you taking the time to do this. And, sure, and I, thanks for having me. Yes. Before we go, I, I, I took uh, on one of your papers. I don't remember which one, but you have these 11 pillars to help. Just quickly, let's go through these and just maybe comment just a minute on each one of these so that people can understand you know, we, we talk about eight laws of health in some of the circles that I move in, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, rest, all these things, and they're important. But there's some other things with detox that a lot of people are not considering as vital, and I believe they're vital. So, Stephen, take it. Let's touch on these in closing here. Sure. Uh, so, as we already spoke, uh, restoration of the uh, body's alkaline pH, so your morning Saliva pH is 7 to 7.5, 7.5 being the ideal, urine pH being 6.8 or lower. Uh, restoration of optimal hormone levels. So we all know when you get older, your hormone production declines, both growth hormone, thyroid hormone, uh, pancreatic hormones, uh, steroid hormones, they're all declining. <clears throat> so if you could raise those back up to what they were when you were 20 years younger, your whole biology is going to repair itself because hormones orchestrate a lot of the protein synthesis of the body, with growth hormone being the master one that causes the most uh, absorption of amino acids into the cells and the most protein synthesis. So I have a product that raises your growth hormone levels like you're 20 years younger. That's quite miraculous. Uh, detoxification of heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, bromide, fluoride. So <clears throat> all my nutrition practice and all the training that I've had <clears throat> and all these seminars that I've gone to, nobody's ever talked about what's called a uh, whole body sufficient dosage of iodine and iodine. So I never knew that I needed iodine supplementation. Instead, I just relied upon the occasional seaweed, the occasional 
uh, seafood that I would eat for my iodine source. And I didn't think about it, but I hit a wall years ago uh, in um, actually it was in 2021. <clears throat> and uh, I got, I had this infection. I got super sick. I was really weak and I couldn't recover. I was bedridden for six weeks. <clears throat> and no matter what I did with my supplements, I was not being resurrected and coming back like I did in the past, no matter what I ate. <clears throat> and so you can imagine, I've got a lot of things in my, you know, nutritional pharmacy to, to work with and they weren't doing anything until I spoke to a doctor in or dentist in California who was trying to get something, a supplement that I carried. I told him what my symptoms were. And he says, you need to read Dr. David Brownstein's book, uh, Iodine, you know, why you need it, why your body can't live without it. So I ordered it. I got it. I, I watched his videos. I learned a whole thing where the, the two medical doctors, Dr. Guy Abraham and Dr. D uh, David Brownstein did 10 years of research on tens of thousands of clients and on the Japanese people and determined that the Japanese people consume 13.88 milligrams a day of potassium iodide in their diet and that the Americans have a much higher incidence of breast and prostate cancer that the Japanese don't have because of that iodine deficiency. <clears throat> and so I started to take 12.5 milligrams of iodine and iodide that was on my own shelf. And I felt all my energy come back and uh, that I, from this fatigue after six weeks. And uh, I developed a skin rash. And uh, so I lowered the dosage so the skin rash would go away. And then I found out later that because of previous white bread consumption, whether you were 10 years ago or 20 years ago or when you were a child or whatever, it's full of bromide. So the, the FDA made the bakers remove iodine as a dough conditioning agent that was used prior to the 1970s and the 60s and 50s and stuff. It was That was the dough conditioner to make bread rise better. Uh, then they switched it over to bromide, which is a toxin, but it makes it does the same dough conditioning so the bread rises. And then so the bromide goes into the body and binds to your iodine receptors and toxifies you so you don't have the iodine ability to get there. But when you take a whole body sufficient dosage of it, your body can finally detoxify the bromide and I developed a skin rash, getting rid of it so fast. Uh, or you could develop a headache or whatever. <clears throat> um, so uh, I have a program for, and I was poisoned with mercury as a teenager from having mercury fillings. So I had serious chronic constipation for 24 years. I mean, like life-threatening constipation. I had to become a colon hydrotherapist and do all these things. <clears throat> do all these fasts, all because of mercury had killed the nerves in my gut. And nobody knew in those days what I was dealing with. So I had to just like keep on fumbling along, fumbling along, fasting, fa doing all these colon cleanses and only making minimal progress. <clears throat> it wasn't until I learned how to detox the mercury out of my gut that I started to have 75% uh, 70, normal bowel movements. And then it took years to grow back my intestinal nerves so that I had normal peristalsis and normal bowel function. So I know how to reverse most people's chronic constipation. Um, <laughs> So prescription drugs, all that stuff, detoxifying those, uh, elimination of chronic infections, that's a big deal, chronic infections. So um, a lot of infections in the body, um, they're, in their, they're nested underneath a biofilm. They create their own polysaccharide membrane. They're underneath the biofilm. Your body immune system can't see them, can't get rid of them. So you got to take things to kill the biofilm so the immune system can see the infection, get rid of it. You also have to get rid of what's called uh, like infections that won't go away on their own, like Epstein-Barr, herpes, cytomegalo. Those guys are difficult. They don't go away on their own. You have to know what to do to get rid of those guys because they will destroy your health if they remain in your body. Um, restoring ideal digestive tract health. So that's, I, I, because I've gone through so much in this area, both the leaky gut that I've healed, both chronic constipation that I've healed, I've had to do three different fecal transplants. None of them worked. So the whole fecal transplant thing is a big fallacy. Nobody needs to do fecal transplants. There's a much superior way with what I've learned and what you, what probiotics I work with and how to do it. But through using certain postbiotics, probiotics, and prebiotics, cleaning out the intestinal tract, lowering the, the unhealthy microorganism uh, population, you can regain a healthy microbiome, nutrification of the body. So that's just, again, making up for what is no longer in the foods, what we need, not only on a daily basis for optimal metabolism, but what we need to recover our health. So we need at higher amounts than what would just be needed uh, to maintain normal biological health. We need higher amounts in nowadays because we're trying to recover our health and repair tissues and create more adult stem cells and things. Uh, age reversal intervention. So I work with peptides. So peptides uh, is a cutting edge science where this is... Um, taking it into a realm that a lot of people have a, a mental block about, but I could just say this, it's just a mental block and you are an adult and you can have free will to choose to think differently. And that is the one of administering intramuscular or under the skin injections of peptides because these peptides are saved my life multiple times. 
<clears throat> so I work with these injectable peptides, Epitalon, BPC-157, Follistatin-344. These things rejuvenate, lengthen the telomeres of your cells, uh, re return the genetic genetics to a younger state, uh, get rid of like old senescent cells when you use the uh, FOXO4. Uh, I had the breast cancer come back on me four times over four years. And it wasn't until I did injections of certain peptide that it went away and it's never come back. Um, sound sleep. So I'm still uh, learning to be good in that area. So I have some particular subconscious program about survival from whatever traumas I've had in my life, such that sleep is still difficult for me. But I found a bunch of different tools that help people to sleep that most people don't have but the challenge that I have. So I have these tools or can introduce people to these tools of how to take things to help increase your GABA levels and uh, help you to sleep. Um, protection from negative EMFs. So uh, I worked with a lot of EMF protection devices over the years. And the one that I really love the most is um, uh, basically it's a quantum type technology where it's basically bringing in quantum field energy. This is a pendant I wear around my neck uh, that I can really feel. And it's the best protection I've ever had. Plus I have one for the whole house. It covers a 2.2 mile radius. So it's one kilometer. Um, I can introduce you to that. Protection from uh, restoring optimal emotional health. So this is a big deal. So we all have in our subconscious mind, subconscious mind is 95% of the operation of your nervous system. Only 5% of your nervous system is the conscious mind. So because the uh, when we're children from ages infancy to eight, we have, we're have we in a hypnagogic state. Everything we're exposed to goes in and goes into the subconscious mind. So we adopt behaviors, beliefs, and patterns that are both functional for survival and necessary and dysfunctional and against life. They're there are thoughts and beliefs that are not based on the truth. They're just conclusions we've drawn from observing adults and others in our environment. So we have a lot of things that we need to, to heal in the subconscious. And uh, I like to uh, send people over to Dr. Um, Joe Dispenza's work, who's done the most to uncover the science of how the human mind uh, works and how we uh, heal completely, both physically and emotionally from anything. And uh, that's Dr. Joe Dispenza. So you can go there and check out his site. And uh, he's got seminars that he does worldwide that are week-long seminars where people that are uh, bedridden, they're uh, paraplegics, you know, wheelchair bound, have MS, have cancer, uh, get up, they heal completely after they have this, go into this brainwave state that we all can go into and their heart opens up and they experience God's love in them. All of a sudden that love energy just completely heals everything in their body. Um, so... <clears throat> That's a big deal. Addressing the universal oxygen deficiency. So it's interesting that uh, scientists have done studies on tree sap that's coded, uh, you know, from eons ago, has um, rolled over pockets of oxygen and trapped oxygen in the tree sap. And they've tested the oxygen levels. And back in the Cretacean, Cretacean period, I believe it's called, uh, they, uh, the oxygen levels were 35%. And uh, everything grew phenomenally bigger plants, animals, everything grew phenomenally bigger with those higher oxygen levels. And nowadays, oxygen levels are only 12 to 21%. So uh, I theorize that we're all dealing with an oxygen deficiency and that you can overcome that by doing um, ozonated hemp oil on a daily basis. Uh, ozonated hemp oil just gives you a way to um, bring uh, ozonides, which is ozone connected to uh, an oil that kills virus, fungus, bacteria, tumor cells, anaerobic, and uh, helps raise oxygen levels in the brain and the body. So you have less of an appetite, you have more energy, you have a better mood, just from taking one to two caps of ozonated hemp oil in the morning. What so do that you, covers those things. <laughs> just two, two questions on that. One, what are your thoughts in regards to um, this last point, addressing universal oxygen deficiency? What are your thoughts on using the food grade hydrogen peroxide drops in water? Um, yeah, I, I did that for quite a long time. The problem is, is that the human digestive tract has no um, catalase to break down, the enzyme catalase to break down hydrogen peroxide. So it's a nauseating experience. Mm -hmm. And depending upon how much you take, that nausea increases according to the increased dosage. <clears throat> so the GI tract is not the proper route. Lungs are, the lungs contain lots of catalase to break down hydrogen peroxide and they produce their own, white blood cells produce our own hydrogen peroxide. So if you want to nebulize or steam inhale, and that's what I recommend for people that have had COVID or are dealing with COVID is they do steam inhalation of 20 drops of 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide, four drops of 10% uh, lick iodine, uh, and uh, two teaspoons of our specific kind of um, uh, silver. It's called silver salt. 
Uh, it's, it's different than colloidal silver. It's, it's way more potent. <clears throat> and if you do that, your lungs will be, whatever's in the lungs gets killed off. Your mucus buildup starts to be broken down and you start to expectorate and get rid of it. And he recovers a lot quicker. I mean, I have Andrea gave a good testimony. She's some, my dear friend that went through this problem with her lungs and we did this and it helped her overcome it. When I had COVID, helped me overcome it. <clears throat> so uh, okay. that's the way to do hydrogen peroxide. And, and instead of, I would recommend doing ozonated hemp oil as a much more effective means of raising your oxygen for longer than hydrogen peroxide, the superior effect. Okay. The other thing was what, what was your, because you mentioned earlier about the growth hormone and, and as adults, of course, we don't need it for growing. It, it's used for body repairs and that is produced only during the hours of sleep from what I understand. No, what is no it's supposed to, it's produced nine times in a day and the okay. most highest levels are produced in during sleep between 10 okay. and midnight. <clears throat> and um, so, but anytime you do any kind of stress brain exercise and your large muscle groups are bearing some kind of a load, your buttocks and your thighs and stuff, uh, that will stimulate your own growth hormone production. So high intensity interval training can uh, raise your own growth hormone production. Uh, but that requires, you know, having the good cardiovascular system to do all that and being healthy enough. And, you know, a lot of people don't have the health to do that. So what is increase that? So you have a product called Synergy One that delivers a peptide. It's a proprietary peptide that you, the body produces, but your production declines with age. So it's designed, normally you can't absorb the peptide in your mouth, but because of this delivery system, it enables it to absorb in the mouth. It's attached to a carbohydrate. So the cells won't absorb the carbohydrate. <clears throat> so they, three sprays under the tongue at bedtime, hold it 90 seconds, it absorbs. You go to bed and typically you'll sleep much deeper uh, and you'll wake up more refreshed. You'll have more energy the next day. Uh, and when you use it over the course of months, six to 12 months, I've had people grow back the cartilage in their joints, the disc, 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 disc thickness in their back, get rid of their sciatica. And they when they were doing the, the disc thickness, they were doing a couple other things too, like uh, the calronic and uh, a cod liver oil with vitamin A and D in it. Um, and then uh, I've had people uh, improve their vision, uh, heal their liver, uh, reverse their kidney failure, get off dialysis, uh, reverse gray hair, reverse wrinkles, uh, lose fat, build muscle, basically all the factors of youth. Uh, and of course, you know, for those that improve your sex drive thing, it totally does that. <clears throat> so it's a very powerful product. And uh, I've had lots of positive feedback over the years. Interesting. You know, I think that I have noticed since I've been taking the Calronic that I don't have as many gray hairs. <laughs> well, well, that would be the trace minerals. Yes, yeah. I think so. I really believe that. Well, Stephen, this has been very enlightening. I really appreciate it. And I think this is something that people are going to have to watch more than one time to kind of absorb everything. But I just wanted to, to put, put this out there, you know, as, as an option, if you have osteoporosis, especially um, anything like that, you know, you really want to consider this. Uh, I, I do have several friends who have osteoporosis that have started taking this and um, I've not heard back from them yet. They, they haven't been taking it that long. So I have one, I have one case history I should share on that. So Pam Bagley was the lady working for two years to get rid of her osteopenia with other new practitioners. And then she came to me and I got her on the Calronic and I got her on Synergy One and vitamin A, D and K2. And in two months she retested and she had dense bones again. Wow. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I really, I really appreciate testimonies like that. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for taking the thank time. Thank you, Donna. And uh, Lord willing, maybe we can have you back again. Sure. I'd love it. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um